Hey guys, Clumsy here and welcome back to A Clumsy Pilot's Life. Lots of updates, I'm not even sure where to start but I'll do my best, okay? First and foremost, we are flying with the Toles A321 which has now been updated to 1.0.2. Couple of bug fixes, fixed some crashes, some new features, we'll go through that. And we are currently in Manila. Our flight for the day is thanks to A Pilot's Life <laughs> where we are making our way towards the career of a virtual pilot. We are now a first officer with uh, 100 XP points and 64 bucks in the bank. <laughs> but less than halfway there to senior first officer. So we will be staying in the right seat for the foreseeable future. But we are employed by Cebu Pacific where we are we have the perfect livery right here. And our current flight is with the A321 it's a real plane and also with the RPC 4111 registration which is also what is in here so as you can see in the back of the plane right here there you go it should also be the thing that you see in front so I made this livery myself I'm proud of it as you guys can tell <laughs> and I showcased this in the previous video video slash stream anyway right so uh, for today, we are flying from Manila, which is the capital of the Philippines. In case you are not familiar with this, uh, these places, from Manila, Romeo Papa Lima Lima to Puerto Princesa in Palawan, Romeo Papa Victor Papa. Uh, now, the Puerto Princesa, eh, there is a new scenery by Decoded Pilot, the guy responsible for the Manila, Cebu, Davao uh, sceneries. He now has made a Puerto Princesa scenery as well. So that includes the airport and the vicinity, including ortho photos and uh, performance friendly, uh, better visuals. So we'll go and check that out today. Okay, so I have most of the stuff set up already. If I can move this out of the way. <clears throat> I wanted to show you one of the updates here. So part of the 1.0.2 update in the Tolis A321 is now when you open the master switch and go to the exterior view you should now be able to see the flap actually opening bit by bit that's the guy you see it it's very subtle the, where my mouse is apparently the flap of the A321 is there i guess it's an airbus thing because if i remember correctly the one for boeing is somewhere here on the side but yeah that's cool so when that's finally open then you'll see the flap open indication there and that's when we can start the APU. I'm super looking forward to the BSS sounds for this plane because the, the sounds of this plane is okay but I had a chance to take a to watch a video of the A319 with the BSS sounds my goodness now those were really eargasmic if you could call it that so I'm hoping that that gets released soon for this plane because that's I think the only missing ingredient right so going to brief it a bit uh, maybe we'll get the clearance first so that we are sure that that's the path that we're taking after this guy speaks maybe can I enable my track IR already Let's do that. Yes, that looks good. Alright. Turn on the beads. APU is available. Okay, it's our turn. Delivery, good afternoon. Cebu Air 641, ready to copy. Cebu Air 641 is cleared to Romeo Papa Victor Papa. Climb via the BUC-2A departure, with the BUC-AL transition, then as filed. Expect departure runway 06. Climb to flight level 200 via the departure. Expect higher clearances 10 minutes after departure. Departure on 119.9er squawk 6136. Let's let our co-pilot read that out. 
Cebu Air 641 is cleared to Romeo Papa Victor Papa climb via the Buck 2A departure with the Buckle transition then as filed climb to flight level 200 via the departure expect higher clearances 10 minutes after departure departure on 119.9 or Squawk 6136. Cebu Air 641 read back correct. QNH is 1013 contact ground on 121.35 when ready for pushback have a good afternoon. QNH 1013 ground on 121.35 Cebu Air 641. 64 on a ground frequency is 121.35. Yep, that's what I said. 121.35 isn't it? Let's go in tune there. Because we are ready for pushback. And let me just brief you guys on the departure for today. Departing from runway 06. So it's a short taxi towards the runway. And then we'll be going via the Bucal 2 Alpha departure. Which is this one right here. So we'll be departing from runway 06. That's the heading. So we'll climb to 3,000 feet. And then we'll make a right turn. And we will be intercepting the 205 radial of the Manila VOR. So this is the Manila VOR. If you trace a 205 degree angle outwards, it will be that line right here. So that's what we will be intercepting. And uh, we will the next waypoint will be in done at 5,000 feet. Okay, so 3,000, right turn, intercept. And then it's straightforward from there. More or less. Yeah. Right. Let's go in the request for ground Cebu Air 641 ready for pushback and engine start. Cebu Air 641 pushback and engine start approved. Pushback and engine start approved, Cebu Air 641. Starting pushback and you may start engine. I also have enabled the random failures, random faults. I'm hoping it wouldn't be the case, but yes, random faults are enabled and the flight time factor is at uh, 100 times. So it's more 100 times more likely to have a failure because in real life, that's going to be very rare. But in a sim like this, you kind of want it to be a bit more often. And the first time I tried that actually, my engine one failed, so that was pretty exciting. I didn't know what to do, but I managed to land in one piece. Start engine two. And two is climbing. We should start seeing. We should start hearing some sounds. There we go. We hear the engine spooling up. Pressure is rising. It's looking good. If you have a look here, there it is. Engine number two. Yeah, as I mentioned, the, the sounds are okay, but they're. Once we hear the BSS ones, those are totally on a different level. There have been a couple of mods that have released since for this plane, but I'm not sold that it can replace the default sounds. They might be marginally better. But for me, they are not very, they're not worth the effort. PTU sounds, that barking dog, it's self-testing. But that should be okay now. There you go. That is all normal. So whenever you hear that barking dog when you're pushing back or taxiing, when you're flying an Airbus, then it is no problemo. That's really how it does, it should sound like. Something. I think we are good. Uh, now frequency for tower is 118.1. Operation complete. Go ahead and set the parking brake. All right, parking brake is set. Disconnecting tow. Stand by. Will do. Now I also got an update in the Pilot to ATC app, the app I'm using for the air traffic control. As you guys might have imagined, this is an offline ATC. That's why this, the voices are a bit robotic. But it's well worth it because you can fly anywhere you want. And uh, 
for introverts like me, you don't have to talk to other real people. So <laughs> for shy guys like me, it's perfect. <clears throat> Alright, everything looks good. No faults, no warnings. Alright, let's go ahead and set up the the uh, trim here. I did actually not set that up, huh? But that would be a good way to show you. So is disconnected and bypass pin has been removed. Hand signal on the right. We'll see you next time and have a safe flight. There's a new feature in the takeoff calculation. So normally you select the, the, the flaps, right? So like that. And then it would automatically compute a flex temp. But if you want, you can use the toga thrust. So the full power. The flex temp is measuring how long the runway is, how good the weather is, and if you can like lower down the thrust without using the max power. But if you want max thrust, then just tick that and uh, it will say no flex and you'll get the appropriate uh, speeds right there. For us though, that should be okay, right? And uh, the one I forgot is this one. Flaps 1, down 0 0.4. If I understood correctly that that down 0 0.4 that does not really do anything in the system that's more like a reminder for the pilot to to set this up because here the trim wheel is something that is adjusted I learned manually on the Airbus like this and this is mostly the only time you would touch this trim wheel barring any uh, special events or un un unfortunate events otherwise it would trim itself accordingly Let's also test the flight controls. Elevators are working. Ailerons, speed brakes are racing accordingly. And we have the rudder working as well. That looks good. So now let's have a look at how the flaps would extend. Love those sounds. Very nice one of my favorites auto brake to max we set the ground spoilers to armed we do a check on the cabin so that they know what's happening and we do a takeoff config test and everything is good and we are ready right ground Cebu Air 641 ready to taxi Cebu Air 641 taxi to runway 06 via taxiways Charlie 5 Charlie 6 Hotel 2 Hold short runway 06. Let's let the co pilot read that. Taxi back. to runway 06 via taxiways Charlie 5, Charlie 6, Hotel 2. Hold short runway 06, Cebu Air 641. Okay, so it looks like they want us to go through here. <clears throat> Turn left here because this is Charlie 5. Yeah, that's Charlie 5. And then go straight on to Charlie 6. Any other planes? There have also been updates to, as I was mentioning, there was an update to pilot to ATC, the offline ATC program I'm using. I was not aware that it was getting constant updates. So the last version I had was from like mid 2019, but apparently it has, uh, it was receiving updates periodically and the latest update is from January this year, 2020. And it fixes a couple of the, the bugs and a couple of the minor things that we found that are lacking. So it's even better than before now. Super cool. We should be right in the center of that taxiway right there. Right? Yes. Good. And we can probably speed up a little. Around 25 knots. What is the speed limit? The normal speed limit for taxiing? 25 knots or 30? can't remember exactly, but as long as no one scold us, us, then it should be fine. Let's go ahead and turn on the weather radar. I've never seen the weather radar work yet, because it should only detect very bad um, precipitation. So we, when only there's very bad weather, it will detect the normal clouds that we see up there. So oh, I haven't had a bad weather flight yet with this plane. Yes, that Cebu sense. Air 641 contact tower on 118.1. Enjoy your afternoon. There you go. Tower on 118.1, Cebu Air 641. 118.1. That's the tower. 
Tower Cebu Air 641 ready for departure, runway 06. Cebu Air 641, winds are 101 at 10 zero knots cleared for takeoff, runway 06. You see how fast that is? That's thanks to the update. Fix the delays. Clear for takeoff, runway 06, Cebu Air 641. Let's go ahead and set that up. Start the timer here. Chrono as well. And uh, the TCAS system. Alright, and we are good to go. Check left, check right. Clear. Okay, good. Also, the airport itself and the vicinities have been updated. This one, Manila Airport. Mega Manila by Decoded Pilot. You see, if you remember, before this turn here had approach lights and you were practically ramming through approach lights. What is this guy doing? Okay, apparently that guy would be taking off before us. Why is he taking off from there? Okay, but yeah, uh, you can see the approach lights here are no longer popping up. They're right on the ground there. That is one of the fixes along with other uh, improvements in frame rate, more optimizations, so very nice work. That is in addition to the entire Puerto Princesa scenery that we are going to. Let's wait for that guy to take off. Yeah, some imperfections with the air traffic control integrations uh, is still there, unfortunately. But it's all good. I mean, we can work with that. It's not a total uh, deal breaker. Maybe we should restart the chrono. Huh? I've been seeing some videos online of when they, how they use the chrono. I think they mostly use it for the takeoff, and then after takeoff checks, it part of that is they turn off the chrono. So they have like a, a time limit on how much, how long the engine should be. I don't know, toga or something. Right. I hope we don't come into any wake turbulence, but we'll see. Thrust to 50%. Thrust is good. Go straight to man flex. And keep center line as much as possible. I'm also applying a forward pressure on the stick, on the side stick. All the way until 80 or 100 knots. And gradually ease up on that pressure. There you go. You might also notice that the glass the windshield, the panels have more of a reflection. I increase the reflection it's just to increase the immersion as well. V1, rotate. Positive rate, gear up. Lovely. Smooth as silk. I love hand flying this plane. And we follow through. At 1600 feet, we push the nose down. So that we can climb, we can increase our airspeed. And afterwards, we switch to river climb like there and you will hear the engine spooling down just a little lessening the thrust at that S indication we go flaps up actually there is a bit of automation happening in there like the flaps I think automatically retract and what you hit the flaps up, it's actually just the slats that are shifting up. I'm not so sure, but that's how it sounds like. Also, I'm monitoring the frequency that we should be at. At some point, we should be switching to the departure frequ frequency, 119.9. -er. Here we go. If you remember our departure, climb to 3,000 feet, then turn right. That's the turn right part here. There you go. Beautiful. Good. 
Alright, let's go after takeoff checks. Ground spoilers, we can disarm. Ignition, we can... One sec, let me just follow the flight director. Ignition can be reverted to normal. Seat belts and landing lights we keep on until we get on a more straight path. Other than that, things are looking pretty good. So let's keep this pattern going. Seeing a lot of planes in the TCAS, let's go ahead and uh, enable the overlay. Oh, we should be seeing one guy right there. Ah, thick clouds though. There's one more there. Lots of Cebu Pacific planes right now. It's time everyone flies. Although in reality right now, the airline industry is really suffering because of this uh, situation that we're in, right? I hope we... There it is. Beautiful. Plane spotting. Hope we don't get too close to it though. We might get a warning from air traffic control. Looks like they are approaching though. They are approaching the airports or they're below us. And because I set the TCAS to be above, it's focusing on the planes that are above me. But if I switch this to below, then I should see those below me instead. Although when you're climbing, it's not that relevant that you're looking at the ones below, right? So it's more relevant that you look at the ones above which you are in uh, more risk of hitting okay i think we're good there Let's start autopilot and i think we can switch to departure frequency now and report departure good afternoon cebu air 641 climbing flight level 200 cebu air 641 good afternoon radar contact there you go 10,000 feet, landing lights can go off. And we are approaching 11,000 feet, which is our transition altitude. I mean, we've been cleared to flight level 200, so it should be safe to go to standard QNH. Looking good. Now it's time to enjoy the scenery, guys. And maybe let our passengers take a bio break. Beautiful. Yeah. You can really feel the improvements on the frame rate. And look at how busy that is. Look at how dense Manila is. And the frame rate is still 30. Very nice optimization. Yeah. I've taken a couple of photos with this plane. I even made one my wallpaper for my mobile phone. Really enjoying it. And then loving the livery. Love your own, right? <laughs> it was my hard work, so I'm pre pretty proud of it, as you guys can hear. Yeah, that works for me. <clears throat> so let's have a look at the timings here, flight plan, while we're admiring the view. We should be arriving in Puerto Princesa at 9.08 UTC. It's currently 8.20, so that will be around 40 minutes from now. Top of descent will be... Top of climb will be reaching in at 8.35. That's, what, 14 minutes? Top of descent would be 11 minutes after that. So pretty short cruise there. That's all good. So it's not a very long flight, but don't worry. I won't keep you with me the entire time. I just want to babble on with you for a bit and give you a few updates. I hope the sounds are also not too loud, but let's adjust that a bit. Maybe just like that. Something like that, maybe. There you go. Yeah, that works. And then the chrono, I think we can stop. I'm guessing there is a time limit if you're using Toga. Maximum thrust. You can't keep that thrust on for an infinite time so you have to time it and make sure that you don't go beyond that time limit <clears throat> all right we are good here 
can close that airport now departure that's exactly what we did right we are here now we are crossing in done we are above 5000 we're actually at flight level 150160 now soon so that should be pretty straightforward i can close that as well and i can now start I'm, now this is quite interesting because uh, i think the normal approach is runway 27 but the winds are pretty much in favor of runway 09 so that's what we'll be using but if you look at the charts here the approach is only available for runway 27 what is this vpt i'm not familiar with that but right now what we're doing is a visual approach we don't even have a flight we don't even have a how do you say an arrival what is this procedure to be used after rnav okay uh, visual maneuvering with prescribed tracks so visual pres prescribed track i guess for an, a visual approach so depending on what category you are the a321 is category c so we are going to follow this wider arc i'm guessing But, I mean, these are nice, but I don't think these will be followed by the Pilot to ATC. So, if we look at our plan here, um, maybe I go through here. And I go to plan on this mode. Cebu Air 641 climb and maintain flight level 280. Climb and maintain flight level 280, Cebu Air 641. So if I go, let's go to airports there, open that up and go and look at this. Actually, I can just open that as well like that, but no, this is this looks better. So we are approaching Balay, 6,000. Next is Bukal, all racks, Tokon, that's the start of descent, top of descent. Nomyo, and then that's the airport already. And then runway 09 would be to the east, facing east. So it would be a very sharp turn. It would be quite interesting what uh, air traffic control would vector us. I doubt we will have that much of a sharp uh, turn. I'm guessing somewhere here they will ask us to turn right so that we have a bigger arc. Uh, maybe they will vector us to final, but I doubt that will be the case. Oh, by the way, one trick that I learned. So we can have a fix here with the A321. And we can say we want to make sure that we are aware when we are close to the runway. So I can type here, Romeo Papa Victor Papa, that's Puerto Princesa, runway 09. Put that as a reference fix. And then I can say um, when we are around 15 miles away, put in arc. There you go, you see that arc there. So you see that you are actually 15 miles away from the runway and you know that you have to prepare for landing and stuff like that. It's a good visual. Also, one thing I learned is you can use the radial. So let me see. Runway 09 is actually, let's have a look at the heading. It's uh, 273. So 094. And, uh, but I want to have a an outward uh, radial, outbound radial. So from the runway, going out this way, that's the opposite, right? So that's around 273 or 274. 94 plus 180 is 274. So what I can do is I can plug in a 274 degrees radial that's moving outside. Put that here and now you will see that uh, runway line extension. So you know exactly what uh, direction you should be facing. So it's a very good indication. I, I've grown to like that approach. A 15 mile marker and that extended uh, runway uh, heading. I like that approach. So, But yeah, I'm not sure that's really how pilots do it. But for me personally, it's useful. So I'm going to stick with that in the meantime. Okay? Anyway. So I think that's enough babbling for now. What other updates are there? Hmm. 
top of descent there have been a couple of bugs before with this plane especially when you're doing a VOR approach um, when you hit top of descent and when you press this button then you get that crash hopefully it doesn't happen anymore it should have been fixed with 1.0.2 but yeah we will see anyway so I'll take care of these things let's do a nice flyby and I will catch you guys when it's almost time to descend okay or when something happens cross your fingers that no what nothing happens let's go and go for a bit of a view beautiful All right guys catch you in a bit welcome back to the flight deck absolutely love this view it's <laughs> very majestic and look at that perfect timing just as I bring you guys back we get the enter destination data pop up right here so let's do that and see what we can scrounge from here I'm not really sure because we don't have a lot of charts available for us but at the very least I can keep track of what active sky XP is giving me at Puerto Princesa QNH is 1012 Temperature is 34 degrees Celsius. My goodness, that's super hot. And uh, the winds are 040 at 8 knots. Not too bad. Runway heading is 09093, so it's a bit coming from the left. So we will be a bit crosswind, but shouldn't be that terrible. I'm not very good at crosswinds, though, as you guys might know. But <laughs> we'll do our very best. Now the MDA, yes, that is a good question. I have no clue what we should set there in case we can't see anything in the in the uh, chart. Is there something? That's for takeoff. So yeah, it's it's more of a uh, a guideline anyway, or a guide for us when we have to announce that we have to land, but. With weather this could maybe it won't be that bad one sec oh no no we do have something we do have mda here type c 870 ah we do have something nice 870 is our 641 expect the nom to arrival with the nomayo transition for the bore approach to runway 27 with the pr1 transition oh, at porto princesa international after tokan cleared direct nomayo and that's uh, completely new Expect the NOM to arrival with the NOMAYO transition for the bore approach to runway 27 with the PR1 transition after Tokan cleared direct NOMAYO Cebu Air 641. That's completely new. They're now asking us for VOR27 is our uh, approach with the NOM2 uh, NOM arrival, okay, this one, with which uh, via PR1, okay. So we are asked to change our arrival and approach while on flight. That's a normal thing. It's fine. We can do that. So what's going to change? Um, everything still looks good, but we will have to change our fixes. So let's insert that. Let's see how it looks from here. Let me open this one. And let's go to plan mode so we can see what's happening here. Um, okay so now the fixes that we have don't apply because this should be Romeo Papa Victor Papa 27 is now should be what we are approaching and uh, let me have a look VOR approach let's close that first so we are arriving we will be joining the nomio 2 arrival here so starting from nomio nomio 2 that's the one uh, go straight to puerto princesa uh, vor that's right on top of the airport is there a an altitude restriction i imagine so uh, from nomio on the 025 radial PR Puerto Princesa VOR to Dulpa at or above 8,000 to Seram at or above 6,000. Oh, the, these are the altitude restrictions, yeah. 8,000, above 8,000, above 6,000, okay. 
Let's double check that those are reflected in the flight plan. Uh -huh. Dulpa above 8,000. Yes, correct. And Seram above 6,000. Exactly. Okay, that looks good. And then from there, when we're right on top of the airport, we then do the VOR runway 27 approach. Now, there is like an ILS and uh, um, RNAV approach, which normally you would use the ILS, but just for a bit more exciting um, approaches, I set it up in Pilot to ATC to assign a random approach. So if it, if it picks runway 27, it just picks something random here. And right now we are using the VOR, so that's what we are following. Now the, for the VOR, the MDA is uh, a bit lower, 420. Set that. Everything else should be the same. The weather should be the same. And we see that the VOR27 is uh, tagged here as the final approach. Okay, that looks good. So we are coming from Puerto Princesa VOR. That's where the arrival will be ending. And then the approach will start. And we will make our way category C. Yeah, we will be uh, doing a 110 degree track and then 12 DME, 12 miles away from the VOR, we turn left to Numde, maximum 230 knots, I think that is. Does that apply for us? And then we do our final approach. On 271 degree track. Shahu Air 641 descend to cross Nomayo at flight level 160, then descend via the NOM 2 arrival with the Nomayo transition to 6000 feet QNH is 1012 at Porto Princesa International. So Nomio at 160, let's go and confirm we'll that. We'll cross Nomayo at flight level 160, then descend via the NOM 2 arrival with the Nomayo transition to 6000 feet QNH is 1012 Shahu Air 641. 1012 right to 6000 feet we still haven't done the proper fix here so let me have a look the track is 271 degrees minus 180 is 91 degrees so what I'll do with the fix info here I'll change the radial instead of 274 I change that to 91 there you go, so it's facing the other way. It should be perfect because that's the runway we are approaching. Okay, that looks good. That looks good right there. Let's go back to the flight plan. Top of descent is 16, 15 miles. Given that we gave it uh, a restriction at Nomio, should be crossing Nomio at flight level 160. It computed that we should be starting our descent 14 miles from now. And we should be able to see that in the there you go that white line right there so let's zoom in a little i believe the recommended start of descent is five miles from the top of descent so i'll do, do just that so i said i hit six thousand here i said six thousand but i haven't pushed it yet and this is where the common crashes occur especially with the vor approaches which we're doing right now we're doing VOR27. Normally, when once you press the push button before the update, it crashes. And it happened to me and at one point, flying from Cebu to Iloilo. But I'm hoping that this time it doesn't. We'll see. Oh, this, the sea looks lovely. <clears throat> Alright. And we should start with the TCAS facing below. So we focus on the aircrafts below us because we will be starting our descent. Top of descent 5 miles, let's do it. Keep your fingers crossed that everything will be okay. So 2 dots is pull, 1 dot is push. Do it. Didn't crash. Good. <laughs> That's a good sign. <laughs> Alright, let's keep it going. Descent is starting. And we will see that it will be descending at a lower rate, a thousand feet per minute, until it reaches the actual top of descent point, and it will, will descend around 1,700 feet per minute, more or less. That's what I noticed anyway. Let's go and mark the constraints here. Uh, 
You see the vertical uh, deviation there catching up. But yeah, looks like we will have no problem reaching flight level 160 at Nomyo. So let me recap. We will cross Nomio at 160, then we will follow the arrival, Nomio to arrival, crossing Dulpa above 8,000, Serum above 6,000, and Puerto Princesa. Uh, now, this doesn't have any altitude restriction, does it? Interesting. Or is it this one? Oh, that's a holding. Yeah, it doesn't have any particular... Let's have a look at the flight plan if it has anything in there. So PR, yeah, it doesn't have an altitude restriction in there. I guess in Dulpa and Seram, there are mountains. Maybe. Yeah, there are mountains here. You see the, the orange markings. Let's have a look at the map. So we came from Manila over here, if I can trace it, uh, where did we come from? Somewhere in this region. <clears throat> I'm getting lost guys, this is embarrassing. <laughs> Sorry, too busy. My mind is too preoccupied. Somewhere here, we came from there. Yes, and we went southwest. This is Palawan. This entire area. This is a very nice place to have a vacation. Mm, the famous spots here are Puerto Princesa, where we are going, as well as Coron. Coron is over here. We passed it already. Coron is my personal favorite here in Palawan. Beautiful beaches. I'm sure you've seen some like best uh, destinations for vacations. Uh, Coron and Puerto Princesa are part of those. Yeah, this is the airport we are going to. One of the recent AVTAB updates allows you to have that airport overlay. Yeah, it's very cool. It, it crashed on me once though, so I'll not try to overdo it. Let's get back to the charts here. Alright, oh, look at that. Beautiful clouds up ahead there. That looks so natural, doesn't it? It's no X and Viro, but it is very friendly on the frames, so I, I can deal with that. <clears throat> Everything checks though. Everything is green. Alright, let's not jinx it. 22 degrees cabin temperature. And from there, it's going to be a chill ride. To our approach to Puerto Princesa Airport. Let's have a look outside and get a bit of eye candy action. I'm not actually sure where the orthophotos start. I did download my own orthophotos though, and you can see it's not perfect. <laughs> this is from Google Images. But yeah, it kind of works. It's better than the default, but yeah, those patches are really quite uh, immersion breaking. But it will look better once we go closer because the coded pilot. Um, like modify the ortho photos uh, properly and merge it with the autogen and all that stuff remove the clouds and all that and all the enhancements not bad though this view huh not too shabby feels perfect for a vacation oh my goodness what i would give for a vacation right now unfortunately with the current situation no one is flying ticket prices are super cheap because everybody is cancelling their flights. It's actually a very perilous time, dangerous time for the 
airline industry. We are in descent. And looks like everything is magenta. That's what we want. When something is orange, that means we cannot fulfill that restriction. <coughs> That's fine. Everything looks good so far. I also love listening to the chatter. Makes everything immersive, even more immersive. Some people don't like it, but it's actually very realistic, right? Having chatter like that as you're flying. Approach is 122.0. I'm not sure if the Pilot to ATC will detect these frequencies correctly. Since the update, I noticed that it does see that better, but still not perfectly so. So I'm not so sure. But let's tune that, 122.0, just in case we would get the right frequency there. I'm actually not sure what determines that. I guess it's somewhere in the airport file somewhere, buried in explain. The views, I think, are starting. So if we look here, let me do one more review before we go ahead and execute this. Because I always forget. Go to plan. Nomio, Dulpa, Seram. We fly over the airport itself, so the Puerto Princesa VOR, and then we go at the track of, uh, let me see, yeah, 110, you see here, PR 110, where my mouse is. That's the line right there. And then, so PR 12 DME from the VOR at 110 degree track and then we turn left towards Nomde which is I guess the final approach fix is it or the initial approach fix you see Nomde is the initial approach fix and the this one is the final approach fix FT27 that guy 7.6 DME good though and I, I found one more interesting feature of this um, TOLIS apparently you can do you can save situations in here so you can save load and save situations and uh, whenever you're doing a landing you can if you happen to have a bad landing you can reload the auto saved situation like a couple of minutes before the actual landing and do it again and uh, you can do that until you are happy with the landing. <laughs> it's a bit cheaty, but it's very good for practice. So you can see I have a couple of saved uh, situations here. Final on runway 06 and runway 224 on the Naia, in the Manila airport where we just came from. Yeah. <clears throat> but so far, so good. Let's have a look at what this FMC is doing. So we will be... Okay, looks like we will be leveling off at flight level 160. And then we'll be starting our descent again, right before Dulpa. You can see the blue line there. If I'm reading this right at least. There you go. Flight level 160 and we are leveling off. It's not the smoothest... Uh, descent I'm not sure if that could have been optimized a bit better but I'm not sure actually how the plane behaves normally in that case <clears throat> yeah looks like we are good there up 
we're still in plan mode here. Let's go ahead and start terrain tracking. Oh, one thing I forgot to show you. It's super cool. I was browsing through the forums. Contact Porto Princesa approach on one two two point zero. Oh, Enjoy they actually got afternoon. it. Approach on one two two point zero. Good afternoon, Cebu Air six four one. Approach, good afternoon. Cebu Air 641 descending 6,000 feet. Cebu Air 641, good afternoon. Radar contact. Continue descent via the NOM 2 arrival. For the VOR approach to runway 27 with the PR1 transition at Puerto Princesa International. That's a bit long. Let's Continue descent via the NOM 2 arrival back. for the VOR approach to runway 27 with the PR1 transition Cebu Air 641. So as I was saying, I was browsing through the forums for the A321, couple of discussions there. And one of my hatest things personally, I'm not sure if you guys, for those of you who fly this plane as well, or the A319, one of my hatest things is the panel brightness. You know when you start the plane, you would have to manually adjust the brightness for each one, like this one. You'd have to do that one by one, right? And it's just irritating because you'd have to manually set it for each one i found a guy who made a lua script so if you have fly with lua you can use the script it adds some hotkeys so that you can easily decrease the brightness or increase it for all in a few taps of, of a key press so if you look here keyboard plugin provided hmm. and if i go to fly with lua here the a3 t a321 commands so brightness increase and decrease you can e even on and off it fully in one click in one tap so it's very useful saves a lot of time and irritation so i like that because I, I don't think there would be an instance where i would want different brightness on each screen anyway and if you want to check this out try it for yourselves everything should be in the plugins list the link should be in the video description and uh yeah just check it out there it's the forum link there make sure to place it in your fly with blue uh, scripts folder okay runway 27 so we will be crossing yeah okay that's fine where's the d i'm looking for the d i think the d will start pretty late which marks the end of descent i might need to slow down faster But the good thing here is that we'll actually be able to do some sightseeing of the airport because we'll be actually literally flying over it and then we'll be turning left. So hopefully I can take some nice shots along the way. There it is already, you can see a bit of it. That's the airport right there. Should be in better view as we come nearer. Zoom in on that a bit. We see here also a speed, a deceleration point, because probably that's when we hit the 10,000 altitude, yeah. After Seram, yeah, the speed limit. So by the time we arrive at Puerto Princesa VOR, we are at 250 knots and we are at 10,000 feet. Perfect. That sounds good to me. Now I did have a look at the airport already and I saw that it was actually pretty, um, the runway itself is pretty narrow and uh, it is 8,000 feet so it's not that uh, Air short. Slow to 230 knots or less. Oh crap, okay we have to slow down manually. Slowing down to 230 knots Cebu Air 641. Like we'll have to slow down on our own. Is that uh, mentioned anywhere in the charts? Because sometimes Pilot to ATC is getting these speed restrictions. I'm not sure where, to be honest. In the FMC, the MCDU is not seeing that limit, but Pilot to ATC somehow is. I see a max 230 here over the holding, but I'm not sure that applies already here. Hmm. Anyway, fine. In Cebu, even 
asked me to approach at like um, 180 knots super slow There it is, guys. Beautiful. Let's go and see if we can get a nice shot of Cebu the Air 641 slow to 230 knots or less. We'll call Cebu Air 641. There's the airport. I think there will be some clouds on the way, though. Yeah. Very nice. If you compare this to the default scenery, very different look. Oh, by the way. Looks like I have to track the speed brakes. Go. And let's find that shot again before we get totally confused. Oh, we can't get a nice shot from here. Maybe from behind. Yeah, once we are past the clouds and below it somehow. We'll see. Now the winds are 0, 4, 0 at 8. Hmm. I don't think that's good. <laughs> Let me think. 040 is pretty much... Is that a tailwind? Might be, huh? Yeah, it is tailwind. Looks like we'll have a tailwind for our landing. So I think what I'll do is I will actually uh, use medium brakes here. Medium auto brakes just to be safe. I'm not sure how this plane behaves in a tailwind landing. Not even sure of the operational limits with that. Oh, there you go, the runway. It is pretty narrow. Pretty darn narrow. But we'll try and make it, okay? We'll do our best. We'll wait. We're, we're, we're waiting for that cloud to go past let me tune into the tower here 118.1 get ready for when we get handed off <clears throat> should be somewhere there oh it's hard to take a photo I'll, I'll take care of it later i'll find that nice spot just for the thumbnail everything here is okay though Good. And yeah, this is where the those fixes help. So that would be the 15 mile marker and that's the extended uh, runway heading. Really like that. It's very helpful to keep, maintain that, uh, what's the term? That uh, situational awareness. Speaking of situational awareness, turn on landing lights. Now this is a bit weird why that gets cut off like that. Normally you would see the terrain uh, indicators all the way through because everything is the sea there. It'd be a bit of a bug there. <clears throat> so let me double check. Approach, everything is still the same. 1012, 34 degrees, 040 at 8. Yes, 27. So yeah. We have 8 knots tailwind, maybe less, but that does sound very bad. I'm not sure what the limits are. Cebu Air 641 descend and maintain 2,500 feet clear for bore underscore DME approach runway to 7 contact tower on 118.1. Have a nice day. Clear for the VOR DME approach, runway 27, tower on 118.1, Cebu Air 641. All right. Tower, good afternoon. Cebu Air 641 inbound for the VOR approach to runway 27. Cebu Air 641, good evening. Radar contact. Continue VOR to runway 27 call when established on final. Continue VOR to runway 27 will call when established on final, Cebu Air 641. Cebu Air 641, you were garbled. Please say again. Never mind. <laughs> Imagine saying that to ATC in real life. Never mind. <sighs> I get kicked in the face for that. <clears throat> Let's also turn on the lights here just so I don't forget anything. 
See, build signs. Let's do that already. And maybe we can uh, do the cabin call as early as now. I'm not sure if it will recognize that. And maybe just so I don't need to keep this 230 knots uh, approach here, what I can do is I can go to previous phase and I can activate the approach phase already, like so. And push this so that it can manage our speed. Looking good. There's the glide path. It behaves similar to an RNAV for me. We'll see. So we are a bit. Hmm, that's a bit different, huh? Bit of a different curve. But more or less, I think it's the same. Enable the approach. Right, looking good. What is the missed art, missed approach altitude here? Missed approach 2500. Okay, so we can keep it at 2500. Once we've captured the glide path. Let me see if I have visual of the runway. Not quite. Should be right in front of us though. Going flaps one. Maybe a tad early on the setup, but better safe than sorry, right? Better safe than sorry. I want to see how the the flaps extension look like from outside. Let's go flaps two here. Let me zoom in first. That's flaps one. That's flaps two. Yeah, beautiful. And let's also see how the landing gear extension looks like from this angle. Be pretty dramatic. Uh, no sounds though. Maybe we have to be closer. And yeah, no sounds. The animation is beautiful, but the sounds are still a bit lacking. That's okay. Right? Final approach, okay. Cebu Air 461 established on the VOR approach to runway 27. Aircraft calling tower say again with your call sign. Mm, I think I will need the help from my trusty co-pilot so they will understand what I'm saying. Um, that one. Cebu Air 641 established on final for VOR approach to runway 27. Speed check. Flaps full. Looking good. Alright. It is a bit windy. Yeah, look at the, the winds. 60 knot tailwind. That's very bad. But as we go lower, that should be less. But still, yeah, we have to be very careful here. 2,500. <clears throat> should be fine. At 2,000 feet, we'll get that checklist. Let's do that call again, just to be on the safe side. Let's go ahead and arm our spoilers. Have we missed anything? Auto brakes are good. I think everything else is okay. There we go, everything is okay. Nothing left to do but fly the plane. And yeah, it is pretty windy. We'll let the autopilot do its job until around 1,000 feet and then we'll handle it on our own. But yeah, if I zoom in, you can see how thin that runway is. It does look much shorter than I imagined. That's a bit scary. We'll see. Nervousness. 
in shoes. <laughs> nah, we can do this. Believe. It's nice enough though that the Airbus automatically tunes the corresponding VORs. So that's one less uh, job that I have to worry about. <clears throat> Wish me luck, guys. I'll need it. They actually haven't cleared me yet to land. 1,000. There we go. Autopilot is disengaged. Happy lights say I am heading the wrong way. Well, I'm a bit low. So maybe... There we go. Sebu Air 641 winds are 042 at 8 knots cleared to land runway 27. Cleared to land runway 27, Cebu Air 641. Flight slow. My bad. Why does the VOR indicator look very wrong in my view? So far away from the lateral adjustment. That's too fast. Glide slow. That's fine, we'll make it work. Glide slow. Okay, there you go. 50, 40, 30, retard, 10, 5. Oh, floaty. Floaty McFloat. <laughs> Sabu Air 641 exit <laughs> runway when able. I'll, I'll take it. 224, yeah, I enabled that landing, landing plugin just for better uh, analysis of my landings. Okay, looking good. Manual braking. And I think we can park somewhere on the right here, yeah, for the airliners. This is exactly where we want to go. That didn't look so bad, but we'll have a look at it in the replay. See if we missed something. Oh, break. Clean up. Flaps up. Landing lights off. Ecas set APU start and uh, we should be able to clear of active Cebu Air 641. Cebu Air 641, there is no ground control at this airport. Let us know if you need taxi instructions. I think here on the leftmost there is an extra space. I'm hoping so. Yeah, that one I think. We can park there. Where is it? This line, yes. Exactly. There's the guy waiting for us. Yeah, they, my peripheral vision is getting confused with that short, that thin runway. It feels like I... I'm landing much faster and so I tend to push up on the stick more abruptly. Uh, am I not doing this correctly? Huh. Somehow that guy is not giving me any sign. But I am right on the line. Maybe it's not working for some reason. Okay. This looks correct to me. But fine. Uh, spoilers are still deployed. Alright. Parking brake is set. APU is available. Bleed is on. Engine 2 off. Seatbelt signs are off. Engine 1 off. Turn on the fans there. Because the brakes are super hot. Look at that. 650 degrees. Oh my goodness. At what temperature do they explode? I hope not a lot. So you, you remember the landing rate, 200 plus, not that good. But in a pilot's life, it's actually, they, they rate you much better. He, here they say it's 93. So I'll take this number instead. <laughs> Let's go and have a look at that landing, right? That's the highlight of the, the trip. Okay, let's see. 
Yeah, that's perfect right there. I wonder why they didn't uh, consider that. Okay. All right. Final approach. I found a nice angle. I'll show you. This one. This one. Cinematic shot. Bit low. Let's go faster. There we go. Right on the glide slope again. Low again. Not the best, not the most stable approach I have, but I'll take it. But I want to see how much I floated. Let's blame the tailwind in that, shall we? Oh yeah, floated a bit there. Would have been perfect on the landing, uh, on the landing pad, the landing touchdown zone. Yeah, that's, that's not bad. Let's have a look again. A little bit of floating, but not terrible. Yeah, a bit of float. I'll take it. <clears throat> From the flight deck right here, let's see how we cross it. Slope. 100. I guess we cross the threshold at 50. 50. 40, 54. 30. Okay, that's fine. Retard. 10. Yeah, that's the problem Drive. we have. See the 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 nose up. 50. 50. 40. 30. Retard. 10. Yeah, that Drive. seems a bit much. It's either a bit much or a bit early, or both. But yeah, that's not bad. I'll take it. I will take it. Alright guys, see? Great landing, it said. <laughs> okay, but yeah, let's leave it there. Thank you guys for hanging out with me. Sorry for the long episode. But hope you enjoyed that one. I do love flying this plane and taking you guys with me. So let me know if you enjoy that and if you want to see more. Because I will most likely do more of these. Thanks for watching. Have a nice day. Catch you in the next flight. Clumsy flying. Don't forget to hit the thumbs up, like button, comment, share, and all that stuff. Okay? Have a good one, guys. Clumsy flying. Bye bye.